this appeals to someone not in heels or to any girl who, oh, sorry. Hello, everybody, my name is Owen Rice at Bears and Bears Science Lab. Today, we're going to be finding the unknown mass of a box. So, let's begin. Here's our birdie, and I'm going to bring this guy up when it's time for a break. But for now, I'm sorry, birdie. I'll just flip you over. Okay, so, uh, let's find the mass of this box. So, this box is of unknown mass, but you pull it with exactly a 90 newton force in this direction at 30 degrees. You are told that the surface it is on has a coefficient of friction, mu k, of 0.4. Once you pull it with this force, it starts moving at constant velocity. So, if it's moving... I said, what is constant velocity? Uh, it's when the acceleration is zero. What does acceleration mean? Acceleration is a change in velocity over time. How can I make it possible to get acceleration zero? Uh, by not changing your velocity. That's why we call it constant velocity. Alright, so... And what is the equilibrium? Equilibrium is when the sum of forces in any particular direction is equivalent to zero. Is it possible uh, object moving and still having equilibrium? Yes, indeed it is. Because in equilibrium, only the acceleration must be zero. The object can be at rest, or the object can be at any sort of constant velocity if the acceleration is zero. But sometimes people think that when that force is zero, the object is in equilibrium. Uh, that's what equilibrium means. Oh, but you said acceleration is zero. Yeah, because... They're the same thing? Net force is ma, and uh, when acceleration is zero, this becomes m times zero, or just zero. Yes. Alright, enough of all those basic questions. Let's begin. Not so now, for me. if we are uh, working with acceleration equals zero, and just constant velocity, then let's say we have sigma fx over here, because we're only going to be working with the x for now. So now we have, let's call this force fa for f applied. So we have f applied, and what component is in the x direction? Well, obviously the x component. But will we use cosine or sine for that? What's your guess? Um, I don't want to discriminate, I only use both. I don't think you can use both. Well, technically you can use both, actually. Just depends on which angle you use. Uh, for example, <coughs> you can say this is Fa cosine 30 or Fa sine 60. These two are the same thing, by the way. But usually you will be given the angle to the horizontal, not the vertical. So keep in mind this one, not this one. Okay. All right, so we have Fa cosine 30, and we subtract that from what is our other force? Well, that would be Ff. If there was a mu k, then if there was a coefficient of friction, then friction exists. And how do we write friction out? Mu k Fn. This is going to be very important what for finding What is the difference between mu k and u k? They look same. Uh, mu k and u k? Yeah. Mu looks like this and u looks like this. So I wouldn't say they exactly look the same. And you don't use u k anywhere in physics. So now fx is actually equal to zero because there is no acceleration. So we're going to put zero on this side. And now hopefully you see how by adding mu kfn to both sides, we get fa cosine 30 is equal to mu kfn. Furthermore, fn is equal to fa cosine 30 over mu k. Now, we plug in all our values. We have 90 cosine 30, and just for convenience, we can't use 0.866 here, so this is actually 78 if you multiply it by 0.66. 
no, 0.866, and you divide that by mu k. And what is mu k? Well, we know it's 0.4. Dividing 78 by 0.4 gives you 195 units. So that well, means. What is the unit for mu k? Uh, mu k does not have a unit because it is a constant. Because think about it when doing dimensional analysis. On this side, Fs is newtons, and on this side, Fn is also newtons. So this mu k must not stand for anything if the units are to be constant on both sides. Got it. All right. So that means that Fn is 195 newtons. And that is accounting for something that I just want to show you with a little quick side example. If you have a 10 kilogram box, this weighs 100 newtons. So normally the normal force would be 100 newtons. But if you exerted a 40 newton force upwards, then this would only be 60 newtons because the net force in the y direction would have to be zero. Similarly, we would have to subtract this F applied y from Fg in order to obtain Fn or Fg minus Fay, Fa sine 30, is equal to Fn. And this helps us because now we can figure out Fg, which helps us figure out Mg. So we get Mg minus Fa, 90, sine 30 is 0.5, is equal to Fn is 195. So we get Mg minus 45 is 195, and we add 45 to both sides, I'm just going to use the simple dingo, and we get 240. By the way, here we're assuming G is 10. We're on some slightly different planet than Earth, where G is a little bit bigger. So 10M is 240, and M is just 24 kilograms. And that's it. Finally found the mass. Any questions? Uh, it took a long time to find the mass. So we can, uh, can we find the mass of sun? Uh, yes, you can, and we'll do that in a future video. Why don't we just memorize the mass of sun instead of finding it? Uh, because memorizing the mass of the sun is pretty hard. And it always gives you a deeper understanding of something when you are actually uh, know how to derive it instead of just being fed it. Saborno Isaac Bari, who is known as the god of mathematics, became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.